Hello lovely people, I'm Stella from Stella's Yarn Universe. In this tutorial we crochet another little bird and this one here is a Eurasian blue tit. So this is a bird that we have here in the UK and also in Germany where I grew up. So it's very dear to my heart this one. I love them, they are tiny and so, just so so cute. <laughs> So whether you have these birds where you live or not, I hope you enjoyed this project. You can also crochet along and just use different colors, create your own bird, you know, just, just be creative with it. It doesn't have to be the Eurasian duted. And yeah, I hope you enjoy this. If you hear some noise in the background, I'm so sorry. We are very close to moving home. And my husband is very busy packing things. So with that being said, let's get started. For this project we need BK light worsted or 8 ply yarn and I'll be using a mix of different brands because I just didn't have all the colors that are needed for this project in the same brand so I'll be using um, Rikurumi Decay yarn and Paintbox Yarns Cotton Decay and a little bit of Shapeyes Katona. So the colors we need are blue, black, a natural white and yellow and although I have a whole scheme here of the um, I think it's called mouse gray this shade the mouse gray Rikurumi and um, we only need a tiny tiny bit so any gray yarn scrap that you have will be enough. I'll only be using this for the beak. So mainly we need these other colors especially the blue and yellow. And then we need a 2.5 millimeter hook which is something in between a size C2 and B1 in uh, UK terms that's 13 and well 12 and 13. But um, yeah, for most of you, I would say the C2 or size 12 will be fine. Unless you tend to crochet very loosely, then you may want to go for a size B1 or 13 because this makes um, the stitches of the amigurumi um, nice, small and neat. Then we need some fiber fill, a yarn needle, stitch marker oh, and safety eyes unless you want to use embroidery floss to embroider the eyes you could use black yarn or embroidery floss for the eyes instead I'll be using these four millimeter safety eyes and then we need some wire for the feet this is one millimeter in diameter so it's something around that um, thickness and we won't need more than 30 centimeters which is about 12 inches and if you have pliers that will be useful um, to bend the yarn and uh, to bend the wire <laughs> but you can also use your hands I, I think that that will be fine it is helpful especially if you make many amigurumis whether they have wired feet or not um, sometimes I even just use it for embroidery to pull the um, to pull the needle out if it gets stuck so it's really helpful if you make many amigurumis so you may consider investing in one and that's all we need so without further ado let's get started you may also need some pins and maybe some glue, it doesn't have to be super glue and you only need two drops. We crochet our little bird from the head down and so we start with the blue yarn. We begin with a magic ring. And 
And in round one, we single crochet six in the magic ring. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Oops. Then we close the magic ring. I usually don't close it super tightly in the beginning because that makes crocheting in the first stitch a little easier. So in round two, we increase in all six stitches so that we'll have a round of 12 in the end. So one and two in here. That's three and four. Five and six. Seven and eight. Nine and ten. And eleven and twelve. In round three, we will join the white yarn. So I'll just prepare a little loop in white. Just make a little knot around my hook so that I have a loop that I can join when I'm ready. So we start with an increase so two single crochet in the first stitch and then we make one single crochet in the next and we repeat this four more times one increase one single crochet one increase, one single crochet, one increase, and one single crochet, one increase, and one single crochet, and then we repeat it again one increase and in the last single crochet we join the white yarn so we start the single crochet in blue so we pick up the blue yarn pull it through now we have two loops on our hook put the white loop on and pull it through the two blue loops now we just get this yarn and out of the way and now we can continue with round four in white. So in the next round, we start with an increase again. So two single crochet in the first stitch, then we single crochet in the next five stitches. One, two, three, four, five, then we, re we repeat this once more, one in increase in the next stitch, so two single crochet in there, and then we single crochet in the next five, two, three, Oops, that's four and five. Now, soon we will join the 
black yarn, so I prepare a little loop in black. So we increase in the next stitch and then we single crochet in the next five. One, two, three, four, and in the fifth we change to black so we start a single crochet in white, pick up the white yarn, pull it through then we drop it and we pull the black loop on our hook and pull it through the two white loops. Just pull the white yarn in tight and get the black yarn out of the way and then we can continue with the next round in black. In the middle of round five we will change back to blue and so we carry the blue yarn with us now. So take the working end, the blue working end. We don't need the white one, we will change back to white again, but that will happen at the end of the round and we already have the yarn end at the end of the round, so that's fine. That can stay where it is. So the way I usually hold the yarn when I carry one piece of yarn with me, I separate the colors this way. So one goes below my the, the knuckle of my uh, or the joint of my um, index finger, and the other color goes above. So the color that I crochet with is on top always. And then just what I usually do, I just hold them in place with my little finger and ring finger. So that's what we do. The white yarn I hold in place also here with my middle finger just so just in the beginning so this that this last stitch here doesn't loosen up too much and then let's see what we start the round with so we start with an increase again so in the first stitch we increase and so now I crochet around the blue yarn so I go under the blue yarn pick up the black pull it through underneath the blue then on top and pick up the black yarn and pull it through the two black loops and one more in the same stitch because it's an increase. So pick up the black yarn underneath the blue and then go on top of the blue to pick it up again. So this way we work the blue yarn into our stitches and it just follows us along wherever we go. So we'll have it ready when we want to change it to blue. But first we single crochet in the next six stitches. So this is gonna <laughs> be hard to see, but we only need a small amount of black. So I thought you can probably follow along even though it's hard to see with the black yarn. One, two, three, four, five, six, and all the time I work the blue yarn in, so it's hidden inside the stitches. And then we have one more increase in the next stitch. So that's an increase here. Then we single crochet five in, in the next five stitches. One, two, three, 
four, five, and now in the sixth one we change to blue. So here we start the single crochet in black, so pick up the black yarn and then we pick up the blue, blue yarn and pull it through the two black loops. And now we can switch the colors. So blue goes on top and the black yarn we crochet in now because we will change to black um, somewhere in the middle of the round. So we will need to work it into our stitches for a bit so that we have it ready when we need it. So what's next? An increase again. So now we crochet around the black yarn. So underneath the black we go, pick up the blue from underneath the black, pull it through, then go over the black, pick up the blue and pull it through. And one more in the same stitch. Pull it underneath the black, pull it through from over the black. So now we single crochet the next five stitches. One, two, three, four, five, and now in the last single crochet we change to white. So we pick up the blue yarn, then we drop the blue and black yarn, find the white yarn, and that's already in the right place. So we Pull a loop in white through the two blue loops and just pull the blue yarn tight. And that's it, that's round five done. In round six we will change color several times and so we need to work the black and the blue yarn into our stitches but I just treat it as two colors so I use the same method because I just take them both together to crochet around them. And so we start with seven single crochet in white. So now we go underneath the black and blue, pick up the white, pull it through under them, then go on top of the blue and black yarn and single crochet. The blue or black may shine through the white stitches, but I think that's fine. Three, four, five, six, and seven. You could, if you want, you could, um, fasten off the yarn and rejoin it every time but then you'd end up with lots of yarn ends and I don't really like that so I prefer using this method. Just the only thing that is not good to do I think is if if we have the yarn end here at the beginning of the round and then we change the color here then we just pull it from there then it might cause tension inside the amigurumi and that would um, mess with its shape so that's what we want to avoid and yeah this method seems to work <laughs> for me so I hope for you as well you can sometimes pull the yarn a little bit I'm mean, not too much again you don't want to cause um, too much tension there but this way you don't have um, the worked in yarn pop out between, between stitches. So in the next single crochet we change to black but we'll then change straight back to white. So we pick up the white yarn, pull it through, 
Then we pick up the black yarn and pull it through the white stitches. And in the next stitch, we change back to white. So we start the single crochet in black. So we pull a black loop through the stitch and then we pick up the white again. Then we single crochet in the next six stitches in white. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Pull a little. And in the next stitch, we single crochet changing to blue. So we start in white and then we pick up the blue yarn and now we can switch so that blue goes on top and we now crochet around the black and the white yarn. And we single crochet in the next seven stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And now in the last single crochet we change back to black. So we start with blue and then pick up the black. And that's round six complete. So this bit here will be the front of the head. So it's where the face goes later. So we won't be needing the white yarn anymore for now. So we can fasten that off. It's kind of already woven in because in the, these last blue stitches we crocheted around it. So that's good. And now in the next round We start with 15 single crochet, so we crochet in black around the blue yarn, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, Fourteen, fifteen, and then in the next single crochet we change to blue. So we start with black, then pick up the blue yarn, pull it through, and now blue goes on top. And in the next seven single crochet we crochet in blue, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now in the last stitch we join the yellow yarn. So I just make a little loop in yellow You don't have to make the loop. I mean, you can always just pull the yarn through. That just makes it a little bit more secure, I think. So we start in blue and pop on the yellow loop and pull it through the two blue loops. And that's round seven done. 
it now. In the next round, we won't be needing the black yarn anymore, so we can fasten that off. And then we just crochet around the blue. In yellow and so we start with an increase so two single crochet here in the first stitch and then we single crochet in the next three one two three and we do this two more times Increase and three single crochet one, two, three, once more, increase and one, two, three, single, single crochet one two, three, and we do it again, but the, it just in the end we'll change to blue. So one, increase, and then two single crochet in yellow, and changing to blue in the next single crochet. So now blue goes on top, and we repeat this two more times. Increase and three single crochet. And once more, increase and three single crochet. Well, two in blue, and the last one we change to yellow. And that's round, which round was it? Round eight done. So now our round has 30 stitches. And the head is done. So now we can secure our stitch and crochet the beak and also attach the safety eyes. So I'm using the gray yarn for this. And I just leave a long enough yarn and to attach the beak, which doesn't have to be too long. Then I just make a little loop. And then we single crochet, uh, we chain two, one, two, and all we do is single crochet in the second chain here. One single crochet in there, and that's it. And we can fasten off and that's the beak done already. So we can attach it right away. You can attach it later if you like. I just like to do it now because it has a different color than the rest of the bird and so I wouldn't know where to. Well, actually you could weave in the yarn and where the wings go later. <laughs> just occurs to me now. Um, but I just stick to this method. I just, because I like seeing the face, then it just gives me <laughs> The confidence to know okay this is this is the, it turned out the way I wanted it to turn out because the face is so important if the face doesn't turn out right then <laughs> then it's a bit tricky <laughs> I'm, I'm always relieved when I know I got the face right so I pulled one of the yarn ends through on one side of this black stitch that we have here in the center and on the other side of it I'll pull the other yarn in through so 
So then we can just see how that looks. I don't secure it just yet. I think it needs to go higher. Definitely, because on this upper black line, that's where the eyes will go, and so the beak should go there as well. So I still have a look at where the center stitches and then I just above it on the side. Just stitch one yarn in through and the other one goes through there. And yeah, that looks much better. Yeah, it should be on this upper stripe. Okay, so now I'll attach the safety eyes before I, just in case I do this before I secure the beak, just to see how everything looks together. Let's try leaving two stitches space between the beak and the eye. I'm looking at a picture here. Um, <laughs> picture of her. Blue tape to see if that's how they look. Yeah, I think that's good. Let's see. Two stitches space, one, two, and then it goes in here. I think I leave it this way. We could try inserting them closer to the beak, but that may be too close. They are quite close to the beak though. Maybe I leave it this way because this way it looks cuter from the front. Let's stick to this. I just go with it now. <laughs> so once you're happy with the placement of both eyes and beak, you can secure everything. First you do the eyes. And for the beak, I just tie both yarn ends together. And then I just cut them a little bit shorter just so that they're not so much in the way. And that's the little birdie face done. <laughs> Actually, the color change here in the end was wrong. <laughs> so I just undo the last stitch of round eight. And just finish the stitch in blue. So we start round nine. In blue and this time we begin with one single crochet in which we change to yellow so now the end of the round needs a stitch marker because it's not defined by the color change anymore then we single crochet two more in yellow now one two and then we decrease so we make an invisible decrease so we go through the front loop of the next stitch and then the front loop of the next at the same time we crochet around the blue yarn so we pick up the yellow yarn pull it through underneath the blue pull it through the front loops and then go over the blue yarn to pick up the yellow yarn again and pull it through the 
two loops. So then we single crochet three, one, two, three, and decrease again. Then we single crochet three, one, two, three. Sometimes just pull the blue yarn a little bit. Then we decrease again. And Anytime you find that the blue yarn pops out in between the yellow stitches, you can pull it or the other way around on the back. Then we single crochet three, one, oh sorry, two, is that right? Three, that was right, so three, one more, and then we decrease. And at the same time, we change to blue. So we start the decrease in yellow, and then we pick up the blue yarn and pull it through the two loops. So now we continue the round in blue, and we single crochet one, and two, then we increase, so two single crochet in here, then we single crochet one and two, and increase again, so two single crochet in here, then we single crochet two, increase in the next stitch so one and two same goes with the yellow yarn if you see it popping out in between stitches just pull it a little bit and in the last stitch of the round we just single crochet one so we decreased four and increased three, so now our round has 29 stitches, but we'll balance that out in the next round. In round 10, we start with one single crochet in blue. Then we increase in the next stitch, and at the same time we change to yellow. So we make one single crochet in blue. Or actually in the first one we change to yellow, so we single crochet one changing to yellow and then we make one more single crochet in the same stitch this time in yellow so that's our increase done then we single crochet in the next six stitches one two three, four, five, and six. In the next stitch we change to blue and in the next single crochet we change right back to yellow. Oh, so we start with blue and then we pick up the yellow so that we have one blue stitch there in the middle. Then we single crochet six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Sometimes just pull the blue yarn a little bit. 
and in the next single crochet we change it to blue and then we just single crochet in the remaining 12 stitches in blue one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven and twelve so now our round has thirty stitches in the next round we start with two single crochet and blue Then in the next single crochet we change to yellow. Then we single crochet six. One, two, three, four, five, six. In the next single crochet we change to blue and then we change right back to yellow again so that we only have one blue stitch here in the center then we single crochet six in yellow one two three four, five, six and in the next single crochet we change to blue and once again we single crochet in all remaining 12 stitches in blue. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Round 12 starts with two single crochet and in the next single crochet we change to yellow. Then we have six single crochet again. One, two, three, four, five and six then in the next single crochet we change to blue again and change right back to yellow in the next single crochet now we won't be needing the blue yarn anymore at least not for the body we will rejoin it for the tail and we'll use it for the wings but we're done with it for the body body and so we just continue in yellow but for a few stitches I will crochet around the blue yarn just to somehow secure it a little better so let's say here until the end of the yellow I'll just crochet around it so we single crochet 13 stitches one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So here I'll just fasten off the blue just so that this is out of the way. Okay. 
nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So what we do here is we create an opening for the tail. So out of that opening, we will rejoin the yarn to make the tail. And so we need to find the five stitches that are at the center back of the bird. So maybe for you, it's not right to crochet 13 stitches here. Maybe it would be less for you or more. The key is to figure out where these five center stitches are. So if you just look at your bird from the front and you can see the beak and then you turn it so you look at it from the top and then you can figure out where the center would be on the back. So for me, that's the last five stitches. One, two, three, four, five. Or no, almost the last. One, two, three, four, five, right. There's one more stitch. So however it may look for you, just um, you know, place this opening wherever looks best, just so you don't have the tail on the side or somewhere. I'm sure you know um, what I mean. <laughs> um, so the last stitch, that's where the last single crochet goes in. And now I chain five, two, three, four, five, and skip five. One, two, three, four, five. And here in the last stitch goes a single crochet. And this is now the opening for the tail. So now once it's done, you can again check if it's centered nicely at the back. I think that will be okay for me. So once you're happy with the placement of that, we can continue with the next round. I won't actually be needing a stitch marker now <laughs> because I know the end is there. So now we start decreasing. And so in round 13, we single crochet four, one, two, three, oh sorry, three, right? Three, we single crochet three and decrease. And we repeat this six times all together. So five more times, one, Oh, that's right, okay. One, two, three, and decrease. And one, two, three, and decrease. One, two, three, decrease, one, two, three, and now that we reach the end or wherever we have these chains, we just treat the chains as if they were stitches. So here we have a decrease, so I go through the front loop of the next stitch and then I go through the back loop of the first chain because with chains um, we increase in the back loop just so that we have the front loops here um, open to crochet the tail out of them later on. Decrease, then we decrease and then we single crochet three in the back loops of the chains here. In there, that's two. Back loop of the next chain. 
and then we have one more decrease so we go through the back loop of the last chain or wherever, in whichever chain you may have the decrease that may be different for you then we pull the loop forward if you have the, like a half chain half single crochet decrease it will be the same for you then you pull the loop the hook forward to go through the uh, front loop of the next single crochet and pick up the yarn and pull it through the front loop and then through the back loop of the chain and finish the single crochet so now I'll be putting my stitch mark marker back in and we continue decreasing in the next round this time we single crochet two one two and decrease and we repeat this six times all together again so that's one two and decrease one two decrease one two decrease one two decrease and once more oops one two and decrease There we go. So now I would say is a good time to start filling the body with fiber fill. So I'll just pull my loop out a little bit. First I hide all of these yarn ends in there. And then we just want to make sure that the head is nicely filled first. And then the body and I'll fill it a little more after crocheting the next round and even if it's not properly filled we still have this little opening here that we can fill it the body through so now our round has 18 stitches and in the next round we'll decrease further now we single crochet one and decrease one and again we do this six times that's the second time single crochet and decrease single crochet and decrease single crochet decrease and once more single crochet and decrease That's it, so now our round is reduced to 12 stitches and now we can get some more fiber fill in there. And at this point I like to use the back of my hook to get it in. Some more.
And I think I can get some more in there. No, it should it shouldn't be that much that it um, changes changes the shape, but I like it to be nicely filled. There we go. So now we have one round to go for the body. And in this round, we do six decreases in a row. So just squish it together. This That just makes it a little bit easier to get the hook through the front loops. And then we just have six decreases. One. Two. Three, four, five, and six. So, now we can fasten off and close the round. So we need our yarn needle, thread the yarn end on, and then we just go through the front loops of all six stitches. One, two, three, Four, five, and six. Then pull it tight. And then we go through the center of the last round here. And weave in the yarn end anywhere you like. Maybe I'll do it here just to cover these blue little spots peeking out and then you can pull it nice and tightly to even the bottom side there out That has actually worked quite nicely. <laughs> and then once you feel that it's sufficiently woven in, And just cut it short and that's the body done <laughs> so now it just needs a tail which we'll do next and then we give it some wings and feet of course so now we're gonna crochet the tail and so we rejoin the blue yarn and the yellow yarn, but first blue. And we do so here on the side of this opening. So it's not the first blue stitch and it's not the last yellow chain. It's like in between. So you can do it here or maybe because it's blue. I start here in this stitch that we already crocheted in. 
this yellow single crochet. That's where I'll join the blue yarn. So I just pull a loop out and then we crochet one, two, three, four, five. One in each stitch here. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. And next we crochet in this side again. So here we can either crochet in this um, stitch again that we already crocheted the yellow single crochet in or somewhere here. I think I just go for this stitch again. That's easiest to me. But with this single crochet we also change to yellow. So I should have prepared a little loop. I didn't do it in the beginning when I joined the blue yarn because in my experience I always pull the knot out. You know this little knot I end up pulling so much that it comes out of the amigurumi and it doesn't look good. So um, now it's it's safe to do to do it this way though for me. <laughs> So, so again here in the side we single crochet so I'll just crochet in this next blue stitch that we already crocheted in a yellow single crochet before. So I pick up the blue yarn, pull it out, then pop the yellow loop on and pull it through the two blue loops, pull the blue yarn tight, get the yarn end out of the way. So now we need to work the blue working end into our stitches because we'll change back to blue in, in a bit. And now we single crochet in the next four chains. Just checking which ones I will crochet in. I'll start here and we crochet around the blue in yellow. That's one. Two. Three, and four. It doesn't really matter where you crochet in. I mean, that's, um, you know, just, just have a look at where, where it's easy. And, oh, with the last one, I should have changed back to blue. So, pull out the yellow yarn and then pick up the blue. So we made three yellow stitches and in the fourth one we changed to blue. Now in round two for the tail we just continue the same way. So we start with one, two, three, four, five single crochet in blue. Okay, that was a little tricky. <laughs> so I try to make this stitch as small as possible so that we don't, won't have a gap here on the side.
If there will be a gap, don't worry, you can always close it later. So that was one. And we crochet around the yellow yarn now. Two. Three. Four. Five. And in the next single crochet we change to yellow, so we start with blue, then pick up yellow, and then we have a three single crochet in yellow. And we crochet around the blue. Split the yarn there somewhere. Let's do this again. That's one, two, three, and in the next single crochet we change to blue. Pick up yellow, then pick up blue. Now in the next round we just decrease a tiny bit. So one, two, three, four, five. Oh, this here is the first one. Okay. Made this very small, I almost couldn't see it. <laughs> so now we single crochet two. One. And two. Then we decrease one. So now we go through the front loops of the next two stitches. Oops. That's one and two. Then pick up the blue yarn, pull it through the front loops, and then pick it up again from the top to pull it through the two remaining loops and then we single crochet one and change to yellow in the next single crochet and here we have again three single crochet in yellow one, two, three, and in the last single crochet we change it to blue. So now our round has nine stitches. So now we won't be needing the yellow yarn anymore. We can fasten that off. And for the next four rounds, round four to seven, we single crochet in all nine stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that was the first round of nine single crochet in blue. So we have three more. You can pause the video here and once you made three more rounds, round five to seven, you can hit play. So I just finished round seven, but I think we need an additional <laughs> round. Sorry about that. So 
five rounds of nine single crochet all together. This is round eight. You just single crochet one in each. That's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's better, I think. So we have one more round to go, but first we can shorten these yarn ends and then we can hide them inside the tail. We don't need any additional stuffing because we want to, the tail to be nice and flat. So that it looks like that it more looks like the tail feathers actually. Mm. So if you can push them somewhere closer to the body, that's better, so that the end of the tail can even be more flat. That would be good. So now we have one round to go, and we start with one single crochet and then we decrease and we do this two more times one single crochet and decrease and once more one single crochet and one decrease. So now our round has six stitches. It's done. We can fasten off. And now we just close the round. So as we did here on the bottom of the body, we thread the yarn end on our needle and insert the needle in the front loops of all six stitches without pulling too tightly just yet. Here we go, pull. And now we go through the center of the last round, pull again and now we just weave in the yarn end with a few stitches. And we cut it short and that's the tail done. So next we'll crochet the wings. So this is how the wing looks. I already made one so you can use the same pattern to make both wings. So we start with the blue yarn and we leave a long yarn end like maybe 30 centimeters 12 inches because we'll use this to sew the wing on later the wings are crocheted in rows so we begin with making a loop then we chain two one two and in row one, we start by making two single crochet in this second chain here. So one increase in here, one, 
and another one in the same chain two then we chain one and turn in row row two we increase in both stitches so two single crochet in here that's one increase and then did it two single crochet in here so now we have four stitches then we chain one and turn in row three we just single crochet in all four stitches one two three and four and now we join the white yarn or cream color so I just instead of making a chain I just pull out a loop in white pull the blue yarn tight and we have to bring the blue yarn to the other side because we only have one row in white then we change right back to blue so we'll crochet around the blue here and all we do is just make four single crochet again one two three four so four single crochet in white crocheting around the blue one two three and four and now we chain one in blue and we just leave the white yarn here we can already fasten it off so now how many more rows do we have just need to double check so that was row four so now we have five six seven three more rows of four single crochet so one two, three, four, chain and turn, that was row five, then one, two, three, four, chain and turn, that was row six, then one, two, three, four, chain and turn, and that was row seven. So in row eight, we single crochet in the first stitch, then we skip the second stitch, and then single crochet in the last two stitches. One and two. So now our row has three stitches, chain and turn. In row nine, we skip the first stitch and then single crochet in the remaining two. One and two, chain and turn. So now our row has two stitches. In row 10, we single crochet in both stitches, one in each one and two chain and turn in row 11 we skip the first stitch and single crochet in the second and in row 12 the last row first chain and turn we single crochet in the one stitch that we have left and 
That was the last row, but our wing isn't done because now we crochet all around the wing. And what we do is we crochet in the side of each row and then here in the top chain and back down the other side. So the first single crochet goes in the same stitch that we already just crocheted in because that's a one stitch row. That's one. Then here you can always see which is the next gap, especially if you stretch it a bit. So this is two, here goes three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Now I single crochet one more in this other side of the chain here, and then in here here in this gap, one and then one more to get around the corner. So this counts as one and then next one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and here I make another one, twelve. Just stretch it a little bit. Here we can fasten off and now we make a little invisible finish. Well actually not really because for that we would skip this stitch and go through here to mimic this stitch but we want the tip of the wing to be a little bit more pointy so we just um, get in another stitch, I mean something that looks like a stitch. So we just go in the first stitch that we crocheted in here through both loops, front and back loop, pull that through, then we go through in between the front and back loop of the last stitch that we crocheted. And then we have what looks like a an additional little stitch there. So now we can weave in this yarn and on the, on the inside or left side of the wing. Oops. Need to weave that in a little bit more, let's see. There we go. So this part will be hidden anyway, so I just cut it at this length. Then you can also a little bit weave in those white yarn ends, just so they don't peek out suddenly. If you want to just Stitch them through a little bit more toward the center and on the on the left side, on the inside of the wing, of course.
going to cut those a little bit shorter. And now the crocheting part is done. So next we attach the wings to the body. So we just start with one side. Maybe I start with the other side because here the yellow part goes further back and that's going to be covered anyway because the wings are quite far on the back, and more toward the back, so the chest is um, quite yellow. So I cover this yellow part here and then I start at the between the black and white part here for the upper part of the wing and then the tip points backward but like under the tail so if the tail goes this way the, the wing goes this way and yeah if you want you can pin it in place just to be sure that it stays in position So I just go and work my way toward the back. So I just pick some stitches on the body or head that are very close or almost underneath the wing. That makes the stitches appear smaller and less obvious. And then I just go through the next stitch of the wing this way and there are many ways you can do it you can insert the needle from the top down i just went from the bottom up and um, that's totally up to you then i go through the next stitch on the body pull that tight and this way i work my way down i'll only attach the wings halfway so the lower part remains unattached here in the back I just want to make sure that this yellow part there is covered more or less so that's how I'll attach it to make sure that it's covered and then I just mirror this on the other side So one more stitch I'll attach on this side. So I reached the yellow part now. This is the last stitch through the body on this side. And I'm making one more stitch through the wing here. And then I stitch through to the front where, wherever I want the wing attached on the front side and here it's even more important to make the stitches small and not so obvious because um, here we have the yellow and we sew with a blue yarn so I make the stitches through the body 
like almost underneath the wing so that they'll be nice and small. Now work my way back up. This doesn't want to go through for some reason. <laughs> there we go. Looks like we only have two stitches to go, one through the body, well three, <laughs> one through the body, one through the last stitch of the wing here. And then we stitch back through the body. And stitch through underneath the wing, where we can weave it in. I think now we need my pliers. This yarn needle is slightly too large. I lost my smaller one, so I definitely need to get a new one. So here we can weave in the yarn end. We can also weave it in the wing just to attach it more firmly even. And once you feel it's sufficiently woven in, you can just cut it short. Even this yarn end, you can cut it short if it's showing and not looking good because we've woven this in, that's fine. And then you can squish the wing a little bit to make it more 3D shaped. This is also how I attached it to give it a little bit more volume here so that it's not just flat on the body. And that's one side of the wing attached. So now we can repeat this with the other side. You may want to first pin it in place just to make sure that it goes in the same place and that it all looks good in the end. Sometimes during the sewing process you can also check just to make sure that you're not going wrong and that you have to start over. So I attached the other wing now looks much better to me than the first one. I'm not happy with this bump there, but it's fine. I'll just leave it that way. So all that's left are the feet now. And so we take our wire 
and we need a maximum of 30 centimeters or 12 inches and it's one millimeter thick and I'm just guessing here there we go so if the wire is a bit too wobbly you can thread it on your yarn needle if your yarn needle is big enough mine is not the most sturdy wire but that's fine so now we'll attach it to the body and then we will shape the feet so I'm just get the wings a little bit out of the way and I attach them quite far toward the back toward the tail feathers and I leave them quite far apart so I start here and stitch through so here I have in this round I have one two three four like more than four stitches space in between which is going to be the space in between the legs because now I pull this through and that's going to be where the legs start so I can remove now the yarn needle <laughs> there we go and now I just pull the wire through so that the center of it is here aligned with the center of the bird and we just bend those downward so these will make the legs and then Maybe about one and a half centimeters. So how much is that in inches? Or it may even be two. Yeah, maybe maybe almost two centimeters. So um, that's zero point eight inches. I just bend the wire forward. So I stick to one one foot now so the other wire goes out of the way and now I just bend the little toes one by one and we have three toes to the front one little toe toward the back so the center one is also a little bit longer so now I start from the inside so this is the right leg and now I make the inside toe so at I would say about one centimeter which is 0 0.4 inches I'm, I'm not measuring I'm just guessing I just bend the wire back and this is a very soft wire that I have here so that's so easy if you have this kind of craft wire that's quite bendy and flexible then you won't be even needing pliers I think So then here where the leg begins, that's where I bend it back forward now. So that's how it looks. Maybe it's easier to see from the bottom. And here, oops, here I make the next little toe, but this one is going to be the center toe of three front toes. And this one I want to be a little bit longer. So I just measure against this one and make it a little bit longer and then I bend the wire back again and squeeze it together. So if you watched my other bird videos, usually it's not that easy to bend it to get to just like squeeze it together. This is different wire I'm using this time. Maybe I should stick to this. It's so much easier. And now we have one more 
code that's pointing toward the front to go. So here I then wire back forward. Now this toe can again be a little bit shorter. So about one centimeter, 0.4 inches. That's where I bend it backward. Squeeze this together. And now I just make a little toe that's pointing backward. So this one is not going to be too long. Also maybe one centimeter, 0.4 inches. Squeeze that together. Oh, that's so easy. Should always use this wire. So now I just wrap the wire around the leg, or maybe you can call it ankle here. You can wrap it around a few times if you want. If you're really good at this, you can even wrap it around um, all the way up to the beginning of the leg. And this would look really cool, but I'm not so good at it, so I just stick to this. And here I just cut it off. You don't need such a tool to cut the wire. It's just craft wire, so a pair of household scissors should be sufficient. And yay, that's our first little foot. So, now we repeat this on the other side. So, just trying to make sure that it will look same, that at least similar on the other side. So at the same length that the leg has now, I bend the wire forward. And if this is not exact, you can always still even it out still. The length of both legs. And now again, we start with the inside toe, with this one. So this one I left quite short, about less than half an inch, one centimeter. I bend the wire backward and squeeze this together. Oops. Then we bend it back forward. And this is now the center toe, so I wanna leave that a little bit longer. That was long enough. I feel with this wire I have to be careful. I shouldn't bend it too often and then change my mind and bend it again. I think it's just going to break because it's, it's not so sturdy. But the good thing is that makes it quite easy to work with. Okay, that's the center toe, a little bit longer than the other one, but on the other side, but that's fine. And then we bend it back forward. And the, the other one is going to be a bit shorter again, about half, less than half an inch and Maybe one centimeter, I'm guessing. Give it a little squeeze. And now we still have the toe in the back to go. Ending that 
forward at about one centimeter, 0.4 inches, giving it a little squeeze. And now we wrap the wire around the ankle, so to speak, just to finish. And once that's done, we can cut it off here. And now the legs are moving around a lot. <laughs> this one is too big. Oops. Whoa. <laughs> it's almost too bendy, this wire. This one is too big, but it's fine. Maybe it can even be fixed by pushing this a bit closer together. But that's fine, even if it's a little bit bigger. <laughs> so what we need to do now, though, well, it could already work, and we could leave it like that. Maybe it doesn't even need fixing, but you can, if you like, apply a drop of glue on each side. So the wings can be straightened again now. There we go. Uh, just because usually they sit on little twigs, I just bend all the toes a little bit. So the ones in the back, so that our little birdie can sit on a little twig. So, So now I'm just going to show you in case you want to, you don't want the legs to move a lot. You can just be sure that you have them in position so the legs point forward quite a bit. If you look at them from the side, once they're in position, a little bit further apart, you can apply some glue. Just to drop and let that dry. So that's our Eurasian blue tip done. One more bird for our little bird collection. I hope you enjoyed this little project. If you did, Please give this video a big thumbs up for me, that would be so lovely. And share it with your friends if you have anyone who'd be interested in it. And also make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to turn on notifications so that you don't miss any of my future Amigurumi tutorials. Thank you so, so much for crocheting along with me. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it so much. Now, have a lovely Sunday and have a great week next week. Take care and happy crocheting. Bye.